You're watching Hurley Films. Hurley, what happened? <laughs> this is what happens when you go on vacation and the pool filter gets clogged. So we've got a bit of a pool problem, but it's time to uh, clean it up, right, Hurley? Yeah. So we've got some pool shock. We're gonna start to do this. So the first thing we're doing is gonna do some pool shock. We've got some Clorox pool shock here. We're gonna do two bags of this. Uh, and then we also have some algaecide that we'll put in after we get the pool shock in and start cleaning it up. We're gonna shock this pretty good because it's nasty. It's pretty green. So I got a couple bags here, and all I do is just toss it in. Make sure we get it all out. Got that in there now. That's gonna stew, but before we do that, we are also going to add something else. So this is kind of like the secret weapon. This skills it, skill it. This is the most vicious algae eater that I have ever seen. My dad found this stuff and he swears by it. It's just this blue liquid and this is just enough to treat the rest of this pool. So there's about 10 ounces in there, right there. And we're gonna pour this in and this pool will clear up. So we're gonna try this out right here. Just drop it in right in front of this and let this spread out. And this will take care of most of the algae in here. That's crazy, there's not even that much. All right, so our chemicals are in now. Now it's just a matter of waiting and letting them do their job. Probably having to backwash the filter a few times. Once we get it to uh, the green color to dissipate, we'll get the brush out and we'll really brush it. And then if this doesn't work, we will treat it, we will brush it and then treat it again. And then uh, the fun of having the pool and the fun of equipment. I think our chlorinator may be broken. We're gonna do some work on it and see if we can figure that out here in a little while later. Right, Hurley? Yeah. Would you swim in it right now? Um, pro probably not. Why not? It's just green. Do you swim in ponds? Yeah. Do you swim in the lake? Yeah. What color are they? Green. So what's the difference? Did you brush your teeth yet this morning? No. So it's later in the day, definitely a noticeable difference in the color of the pool. It's not as green, you know, it's, it's, it's becoming a little bit more blue. Uh, that's because the algae is starting to die off and you can tell, especially out here in the center where that's starting to really happen. So. We're gonna get the brush. We bought a new brush. We're gonna get it on this pole and really brush the bottom really good and stir all of this up. And that will help get a lot of this moving. I also have discovered that this pool chlorinator has stopped working again. This Intex uh, QS 1200. And I've contacted the company and I have had no response as of yet. So we will see on that. Um, I am going to try and replace this uh, GFI head um, because it is not functioning anymore. This is the same thing that happened to the last one that I had and I replaced this head and the chlorinator still did not work. So if that's the case, uh, I would officially not recommend buying these Intex saltwater chlorinators uh, unless you are just willing to buy one every single year. Um, I'm going to try to see if I can fix that by bypassing the one, uh, the GFI that this system came with. Uh, and if that works, then uh, maybe these things are just cheap pieces of junk and this thing's pretty good. So we'll see. I'll update you guys on that. But right now, it's about 7,000 degrees outside, so I really don't want to do it right now. But we do have chlorine tablets and a good old fashioned chlorine floater backup. Uh, so we may be switching from a saltwater pool to a traditional chlorine chemical pool because 
we just can't afford to buy a new one of these every single year. The salt filter, however, this thing's still kicking and super big thumbs up for this thing because it is not worn out. It has been awesome. And it's by the same company. So I don't know. We'll see. Hopefully it's just that. Hopefully it's just that. What do we got going on in here? Oh boy. All right, well, we're gonna change that. Okay. I've got my official GFI tester kit, which means cut off the stupid GFI and install this plug and see if it works. If it works at that point, we'll know that we just needed new GFI and not whatever piece of junk Intex decided to install. On this you thing. guys would be amazed at the amount of views our pool videos have gotten. It's been pretty crazy to see. Uh, I did not set out to be known as a uh, above ground pool guy, but apparently uh, there's a little bit of a following there. And we enjoy it, and I like the pool, and it's fun. So it gives me something to do, I guess, something to tinker with. On a side note, I just love things like this, where you have something that uses a uh, Phillips head screw like this, and then uh, the other half of the product uses a flathead. Just love it. But what we're gonna do here is we are going to plug this guy in and see if we have, Did you look at that. We are back functioning again. So the good news is that it is just these piece of junk GFIs. So I'm gonna find a better one of these and we will get this installed so that this chlorinator can work. Um, so that's good news. It's not the chlorinator, it's the GFIs in which they decide that they want to use to protect the system. So at least that saves some money. Now I can take this chlorine back. pumping chlorine that's what we want to see that's how we know we're getting back to some good results right there look at that that's good stuff there we'll have this pool back crystal clear crystal clear in no time well while the pool is cleaning itself I don't know if that's such a thing I want to show you one of our two cool things here's one check this out light so uh, starting to put up light fixtures that's where I'm at so I'm up in the bonus room the giant awesome playroom slash youth room slash movie night room slash family room it's gonna be party central up here but on this ridge beam uh, all down the line we're gonna have three fans so I've installed one down on the end I've installed half of another one, and then I've got the last one to do right here. So, I'm going to be working on that, and I thought I would set up the time-lapse camera and let you watch me put these last couple fans in. And then, once I get these in, I'll take you downstairs and show you what else has happened since we last saw you. Speaking of tinkering... Fans, installing fans. Uh, this is one of the ways that my electrician told me, hey, you can save a lot of money if you would uh, just avoid letting, or if you would help us avoid doing fan installs. And so I've done a lot of fans before, and I thought, you know, this is not a big deal. Um, and we didn't have a ton of, uh, we had a lot of fans, but it it's not a big deal. Uh, it's something that helps us save some money, and it gives another thing to do. But we are nearing that phase of house construction where you are starting to do just about everything yourself. It's uh, it's the last push towards the finish line, and we're tired. I can tell you that much. So some of the electric is not done yet, but all three fans are in. And all of the lights in this uh, room are completely hung with the exception of 
the vanity light that has to go in there and we might be able to get done with that today too. Well, let's take this junk downstairs because Casey wants to install something else. The big fan. The big fan that goes over here. But look at that. It's kind of a, not a very dramatic reveal, but <laughs> there it is. So far, all the lights. We don't have this chandelier yet. That will come later. What do you think of it so far? Now that I'm looking at it up here, I think that double layer circle light might be really cool. Mm-hmm. It might take away from the elk, though, that's going to go there. Yeah. Okay, let's get the people's opinion on this, okay? Okay. The wheel locks are on, so you gotta undo them. But Casey bought a light fixture for this room that we're standing in right now. And we are trying to decide if it's too big or not. Well, we already decided. We kind of decided, but I wanna see what you all think. All right, ready for the reveal. There it is. This is a 24 bulb hoop light in this laundry room. Four feet diameter, 24 bulbs at 60 watts each. So this is kind of like what it looks like when Jesus comes back. Golly. So, this doubles is this, you can come stand right here and get a tan. I love it. Yeah. So this, uh, this is overkill. That's what I think it's overkill. I'm probably silhouetted right now. They probably can't even see us. Okay. But it's, golly, it's bright. <laughs> no, it's uh. Look at me real quick. I can't even see your face. You're so dark because this room is so bright. Like this is the ultimate ring light for if you are going to be doing a makeup tutorial. Oh yeah, I probably shouldn't be standing in it right now. So what do you think? Too much? The answer is yes. It's way too much. Okay, so we're gonna downsize to a 32 inch, which is almost three feet, and only nine bulbs. Womp womp. But we're gonna see, because there's supposed to be a light right there above that window, and that plus this is definitely too much in here. So I'm thinking if we downsize this one a little bit, then we can add one right there, and then it might all be nice and proportionate. Yeah, it's like, illuminating like look how much brighter this room is compared to this room and there's a lot of lights in this room yeah <laughs> but what goes over the window is a uh, something like this right here which i don't know if this works yet or not yeah, oh there you go so something like this is what's going to go over the window so a little gooseneck light. There's also one over here, and then that will tie it together because you'll be able to see it from over here. So all of them kind of work together. But this monster is what's about to happen. 72 inch ceiling fan. Woof. That's gonna go right there. So, I've got the other scalpel here. I've got to crank that up to the top and then we'll start going on getting that done. But this is exactly the reason we did the bay window. I mean, look at this. Through the window. Beautiful sunset. And a pond. Gotta be close. I don't know. I don't know if we can make that. Gonna be on the top rung for sure. Should I go upstairs and get the other scaffold and bring it down? Probably. 
Am I going to? Probably not. It seems like the longer we go uh, in life, the more tired we're getting. <laughs> and I don't know if that's just because we've got three kids now and we get progressively more busy and there's just lots going on, including the house. Uh, it's just one of those things, I guess. Uh, I keep Casey and I keep telling each other that, you know, this is just a phase. This is just a phase. And it's true. You know, we didn't set out to build a house twice, but this is the cards that we've been dealt, and this is the story God is telling with our life. So we're just trying to walk in it. So we've encountered a little bit of a problem. So we've got a hot wire here, and then our black is not. But then when Casey flips the switch, this one becomes hot and this one does not. So this is supposed to be, this is supposed to be the fans control and this is supposed to be the lights control. Obviously one switch doesn't need to do both of them. So we're gonna have to figure this out before we work on it anymore tonight. Cause I don't really wanna get electrocuted, especially like this. Come with me. And you'll be in a world of OSHA violations. So that's a minor setback. Didn't get to put the big fan up uh, like we wanted to. However, we do have one other thing that we have to do, which Casey and I are going back upstairs because we have a vanity light upstairs like I was talking about that we're gonna go try to put up now. Um, and see if we can do it. It is dark up here because like uh, earlier, the power wasn't on. We do have the light in the corner. The bathroom light works. And apparently the bathroom light works. So that's a good thing. I don't know where the switch is. Okay. Ah, let's look at that. All right. Why, is the, why the switch isn't here? Me. Oh, well, it's because the door maybe we thought was gonna open that way. I don't know. But right there is where this lighted mirror is going to go. So we're gonna set the camera up and see if we can't get that installed. Casey's gonna do this one all by herself. Okay. Why'd you laugh? The Bible says that his word is a lamp into my feet and a light into my path. Uh, and that idea of a lamp is super interesting to think about. So what's cool about this is the back of this mirror has a rail on it. So the back of this rail is, I mean, it could go in any orientation it can. Like this is how we're gonna hang it like this. But what's cool about this is this came with some little cleats. So these little cleats go on the wall just like this. And then what happens is the mirror is going to set up inside of them. So it will literally hang on those cleats just like this so we just have to install these on the wall just like that level it make sure it's good to go and then all we got to do is hang the mirror just like this and it's done i love stuff like this this makes things easy somebody used their brain you know what makes it even easier when the little cleats have a level attached some of them do these holes Look like they're gonna be 29 and a quarter. So five inches up, because we've got an inch for the uh, countertop, and then four inch backsplash, so five inches. And then this mirror is thirty-one and a half inches tall. Here's your pencil. It just needs to be censored. Uh, well, we can center it here in a second. That, that's the easy part. This no, is no, the, I mean centered oh, vertically. Between this and that? Yeah, between that and the ceiling line. Okay. So that's going to be 39. No, 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 no. On the half. There you go. Okay. So now we're going to put a mark at 29 and a half. Reach. You got to want it. Okay. I notice immediately that, you know, it says lamp, not 
giant flashlight that allows you to see everything. This idea of a lamp is like an oil lamp, something that you would use at night to walk through a house. Something very small that doesn't allow you to see the whole picture yet, but is just enough light for you to be able to continue forward. And that's what we're doing. We're just trying to continue forward in obedience and trust God with the things we can't fully see yet. All right, well, we got the electric hooked up and we got a line. The problem is the drywall anchors that this thing came with are absolutely trash. So we're gonna have to get some new drywall anchors. I don't have any, but this is what it looks like. So check that out. It's got the back illuminated strip and the front light. And then there's a way to change the colors. I'm not exactly sure how, if you'd like to figure that out. Oh. I think the middle. Yeah, that one. Yeah, so then it comes back on, is that? Yeah, it turned on. Yep, it did. Oh, oh it's brightness. brightness. Ooh, fancy. Oh, that's the defroster. Oh, defog. That's like, so if you're in the shower in here and you get out, you can turn that on, it'll defog, it'll heat up the mirror. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Fanciest mirror in the house, and it's not even in the bathroom that we're going to use very much. You just miss Casey saying basically goodbye house for the rest of this week because it is gonna be nuts. We've got things every single night for the rest of this week, so we won't be able to come back over here and work on stuff. But wanted to be able to get you guys an update on where we were at right now uh, with everything because I was down here earlier didn't video it because it's pretty straightforward. We put in the closet door catches up here. So now they uh, shut and stay shut. And all we needed was a three quarter inch drill bit, which check that thing out. So that made all the difference in the world getting those things in. They fit in just right. Didn't have to go get the expensive ones from the uh, cabinet store. Got to use the ones that we had. So. At this point, that's our house update. I'm super excited. We both feel like it's so close, so close. Uh, hopefully we can move in in the month of August. That's the goal. We are not far off and we probably won't move in with it finished either. You know, it's, that's fine. We'll kind of have a few things to do at the end. We still got some major things like getting the rebar done for the side of the stairs. The rest of the outlets and stuff, uh, countertops are coming Thursday. So I'll try to film that and give you guys an update when they're bringing that over. But as for now, we love you. Jesus loves you too. And we'll see you on the next video. I hope you enjoyed today's video. And <laughs> I'm going to leave you with this little clip of Brad and I getting to go to uh, Florida on our recent trip shooting for Final Descent. And we got to have some fun time fishing with each other. Uh, and we caught 100 sea trout in about two hours. It was pretty awesome. But wherever God has you today, whatever path he has you on, trust the light that he's given you that you can see with right now and continue to walk where he has you walking. And like we said earlier, we love you. Jesus loves you too. We'll see you on the next video.